Cool. Well, what's going on, everyone? Lauren Gardner coming to you from the friendly confines of the Gardner household as I am safely quarantined with my family. First and foremost, I hope that this finds all of you safe and healthy. And secondly, I know a lot of you from the confines of quarantine are looking for ways to get back to your respective communities, especially right here in Denver, Colorado, which brings me to this gentleman right here, the director of external, external rather, engagement for Make for COVID, Omar Subwa. Omar, first of all, you're looking very professional right now, my friend. I love the background. Um, I'm happy that you're safe and healthy with your family right now in Westminster, Colorado, but let's talk about your role with Make for COVID. Good. Well, thank you, Lauren. I am actually very safe. I am at home. Uh, this is just a green screen that I've been <laughs> cheating with. But, um, you know, we love those exploring those capacities on Zoom on there. So uh, first off, thank you for having me on that uh, first vlog that we're doing for the community. Um, the Make for COVID is a great uh, initiative that was put together uh, by um, initially uh, CU uh, Anschutz and their branch that is uh, making stuff called Inworks. So they have this maker space where people are getting together, they have access to 3D printers, but also other tools to prototype things basically. And from there, it started graduating into the community saying like, hey, um, you know, we need somebody to, who's, a, who's a professional designer to do the reviews and all these type of things. And then, oh, uh, you know, let's talk to Omar. He knows how to reach out to the press and to people. Uh, let's get, you know, this person, this person, this person. So that was a small group that initially started together over a week ago, and now it started to expand like crazy. One of the reasons it started to exp expand is that by having medical professional on board, we can gather the needs of um, what, what the hospital needs right now, and that's called PPE, personal uh, protection e equipment. Um, and, um, and so that, that's what started and say like, okay, well, we have a lot of people with 3d printers in Colorado. We have a lot of people with different things, different tools they can help, but how do we make sure that it's being used by the people who need it the most? Yeah, we know that in a press conference, I believe it was last week, governor Jared Polis talked about the need for Coloradans to really create their own supply chain of medical supplies. And that's really where make for COVID comes into play. And, I think it's great that it's anywhere from, you know, professional manufacturers that can potentially make anything from a ventilator to masks to people in their own homes, like you said, with 3D printers or laser cutters that can help out. Now, for these people that are sitting at home that are in quarantine and they say, hey, I have a 3D printer. This is awesome. How can I help? How can these people help and really give back to their communities in a, a really impactful way at this point in time? Right. So the, the best advice I can give is like, don't start printing yet. Come and join, go to makeforcovid.co.co, basically. Um, you'll get some information around there. There's also a join M4C button, which is join the community. And in that aspect, you will receive instructions on what to print, on what material, because some hospitals have different cleaning procedures that they want to get. So they can't use all material that we have or some of the other one. They also need to do, uh, you know, like some hospital want parts and some of them want things they can assemble or some of them want fully assembled stuff. We've also put in, in, in the entire chain of how do we pick those things up and how do we make sure like you, we treat you like you have COVID. So we need to make sure like you clean everything, you clean all of the processes, um, we basically have created standard operating procedures for you to follow. So it's very important that you reach out to us, you come into the community and see if you can help in that aspect. But there's many other things like not just with the 3D printing, like sewing machine or somebody who's uh, ready to go and do some pickups. And once we get ready, we are focusing on uh, the Colorado needs, right? So we work with large hospitals like UCLs, um, CU or uh, Anschutz, I mentioned, Children's, uh, but also with a network of 43 rural hospitals in Colorado that are in great need of those personal uh, protection equipment. So we need, we need all the hands we, we can for our many factory, as we call it. It's many people doing manufacturing and we need to coordinate all these huge aspects right there. 
Yeah, this is really the best of humanity on display with the collaboration of people that are really experts in their respective fields. Now, you you kind of glossed over this, and I want to hone in on this uh, portion of, you know, maybe potential volunteer opportunities for people, and that's transporting supplies from point A to point B. How can people who don't own 3D printers or laser cutters get involved and still help as long as you have a vehicle available? Yeah, we're going to make available, We uh, one of our partners is looking at putting a system in place. It would be like almost like an Uber application on your phone. So you will be receiving like, a, uh, can you go and pick up this? You say yes or no. And if you say yes, it's going to be coming in. And I have my little son that comes here and say hi to everybody. Hi, he's cool. That's uh, the beauty <laughs> of working at home. And, um, and so you'll be receiving that information on your phone telling you like, hey, um, you, can you go and do that pick up there and that pick up there and that pick up there? It's going to create the route for you and also how to, uh, where to drop those. Uh, but again, in that aspect, we will need you to follow the certain uh, operating procedures that we're going to have. Like, you know, like how do we clean your hands, wear gloves, mask, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, all of that is getting together. But again, if you sign up, we know you will be there. You will be able to help us. Uh, and, and support this this uh, initiative. Also, uh, you know, we need funds. I mean, um, having funds to basically buy material uh, so that we can we can get that by fuel and gas for people to put in their car and get from here to there. We have a lot of resources, a lot of people coming in. But uh, uh, you know, if if it's just chipping a few dollars, we'd love to get that too. That's uh, all of it. All of it helps. Okay, so let's just uh, recap everything here. Obviously, if you want to help, all you have to do is go to makeforcovid.co, and you can either donate your time, your resources, your expertise when it comes to actually making those medical supplies and really helping out with the supply chain here in Colorado for these, these medical supplies that are really life-saving at this point in time. You can donate funds, which are obviously desperately needed as well in order to make all of this happen. Or you can actually transport the supplies from point A to point B. That is all correct. Thank you, Lorraine. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for helping us too and joining our community right there. And uh, we hope to provide some more uh, of those vlogs to you so that uh, everybody can share and learn what we're doing. I love that. It's so important to get the word out. I know there are so many people here in this great Colorado community, um, I'm a native myself, that are so passionate about giving back and helping, and this is a great way to do so. I love that this is a family affair, Omar. Thank you so much for uh, helping us out and just spreading the word, explaining what this is all about, and your son making the cameo. That was fantastic. Thank you, Lorraine. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time. Again, Bye -bye. go to www.makeforcovid.co to help out.